organization called the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, uh, with which I have been involved. I serve as director of research. Um, I love this organization. I'd like this fellow to tell you more about it. His name is Dan Itso. His, act, his name is the Honorable Dan Itso. Representative Dan Itso, um, who has taught me a lot of great stuff. Dan. What makes New Hampshire different is its constitution. And what makes New Hampshire's constitution different is that it was adopted by the people of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is pretty much the very crucible of liberty in America. And granted, a whole lot happened in that uh, commonwealth of the south, or the commonwealth of the south. But the first action against the British happened in New Hampshire in December of 1774, I believe, with the Battle of Fort William and Mary, December 13th. And in, we had the first constitution on this side of the Atlantic. Now, Connecticut is credited with that, but that's after their provincial constitution. We had the first self-written original constitution. And it was a temporary constitution. We wrote it just for the duration of the war. It was an emergency constitution because they said, oh my god, we've got no government. So the legislature quickly got together, wrote themselves a constitution, and that sufficed them until 1779. And so John Langdon again organized what was the world's first constitutional convention. And this is supremely important because it's the first time that the body that drafted the Constitution wasn't the legislature that was going to make laws under that Constitution. It was a separate body. Now, a lot of the same participants, but it was a separate body. But what was important is it was that the people adopted this Constitution. And I wrote a commentary on the Constitution, which I call the People's Liberty. Yeah, this is author S. Wilson. And so I was really an orphan. I was, I was an orphan as far as the politics went. Um, in society with Dr. others, of course, we know that there are many things society. that we can gain, both material things in terms of trading, and of course, what I would call spiritual things in terms of friendship and, and, and the like. We argue with people about freedom and try to convince them. We have to understand that <laughs> rational arguments are important, and ultimately rational arguments should carry the day. But if somebody is listening with their emotions, if somebody's listening with a false sense of what is right or wrong, and a false moral sense, all of those arguments are going to simply, uh, you know, simply going to bounce off of them. They're not going to penetrate, and they're not going to uh, come along and support freedom. Now, no, it's been fantastic. You know, I've really enjoyed it. And you know, you've drawn a lot of good people here, too. And in the middle of winter, and of course, in positioning it just before the presidential primary, excellent, excellent. Well Would done. you use the word genius? Genius. I can use the word genius. <laughs> Only for you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, I'd like to have Dan come up here. Please give Dan from uh, he's the chair of the Republican Liberty Caucus of New Hampshire. He's gonna come on up. start by telling a funny story about uh, Senator Sununu, um, but uh, unfortunately there aren't any. <laughs> Senator Sununu. I'm not quite sure how to react. I, I'm considered very funny in my family. <laughs> introduction, uh, just a, a couple of observations. First, uh, uh, one piece of legislation that wasn't mentioned, and I'll, I'll touch on it briefly as well, but it is important to me, and I know it's important to you, is our uh, lead Republican sponsor on the bill to repeal the real idea. Yeah. <laughs> Milton Friedman 
like to use a line that he was a capital R Republican, small L libertarian. Um, and I know those of you who are members of the Liberty Alliance and, and the Liberty Caucus um, demand perfection at times. <laughs> There's no way I can agree with all of you on every issue. As I said, I don't agree with my brothers and sisters, my family members on, on every single issue. But um, I certainly appreciate the, the invitation to be here. The suggestion that I'm one of the more, the most libertarian thinking senator, or for that matter, the smartest senator, if that were even true, let me assure you, it would be a lot like being the best surfer in Kansas. <laughs> scheme of things, we couldn't really get carried away with ourselves. Well, but for those of you that, that haven't noticed, there's a presidential campaign on. Um, although, although, I guess in a room like this, uh, you look out at the sea of buttons and you can't help thinking uh, or wondering whether we're in uh, the United States of America or Stalinist Russia, because there appears to be only one candidate. <laughs> really right for the people of the state of New Hampshire. I thank you very much for the invitation to be with you tonight, and I wish you good luck in your work. What do you, uh, hey, what do you think of the weekend so far, Dr. Nicole Smith? This More weekend, fans. you know, last year was fantastic at the Liberty Forum. This weekend has been absolutely unbelievable. It's so exciting. Uh, the timing of the Ron Paul campaign happening at the same time that the Liberty Forum is culminating at the same time that all these folks are here in the media has just been remarkable. In this hotel, we're walking by the John McCain people. It's good. Although I'm not sure whether I still have my wallet. I, I, some, I think somebody took it. But anyway, or my freedoms. Um, uh, and in addition to that, uh, F. Paul Wilson is here, and this guy is just unbelievable. Uh, I can't wait to see him speak. His novels are awesome, so uh, I'm delighted. Awesome night. Awesome day. Awesome weekend.